Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to Bee and K Bees for part two of our Making Queen Bees series. This is going to be on the queen rearing schedule because it's one of the great aspects of this whole process that allows it to be really, really um, manageable and expected. And so we count our schedule from the day of graft, but we are once again looking for day old larvae. So they spend three days as an egg and then they emerge into a larva. After about 24 or 36 hours, they're just perfect to be picked up with the grafting tool. So we look for day-old larvae on day one, on, on graft day. Nine days after that, those cells will be capped and they will be fully hardened and ready for transport. At that point, we transfer them into the incubator. If you were to do that earlier, and you can uh, as soon as they're capped, but any earlier than that is risking damage, uh, more so than I like to. Um, you really, really shouldn't be fearful of an early emergent queen that early. So I suggest you wait until day nine at that point. Once again, they're fully hardened and ready to be transported into your incubator. So they will spend a couple days in the incubator and on day 11 is when we transfer them into our mating nukes. Uh, they will, those cells will emerge at the end of day 11 to the end of day 12. So that's a really good time to transfer them into the mating nukes. They're usually at that point starting to move around in the cell and uh, you just get them packed in there with a bunch of bees that'll keep them warm until they emerge and you're all good. Um, so they emerge once again at the end of day 11 to the end of day 12 and then they start their development, their maturing process. Uh, that usually takes about a week, maybe 10 days, and then the queen will go out on a mating flight. On that mating flight, she's going to mate with 10 to 15 different drones in what's called a drone congregation area. Interesting note is that the queen flies much further than the drones to reach these drone congregation areas, and that's kind of a neat like evolutionary tactic to reduce inbreeding and increase genetic diversity. So after about seven to 10 days, those queens will fly off to those DCAs, those drone congregation areas, and mate with a bunch of different drones, coming on back and trying to fly that whole distance without getting eaten by a swallow. And they will return to the mating nuke that they oriented to, usually, and uh, begin to lay eggs shortly thereafter. Uh, an interesting thing, and I think I have a video at some point earlier on in the channel um, about a queen that returned with mating sign attached to her. Uh, that was a sign of the fact that I was into my mating nukes too much at that time, but uh, also it was kind of neat because it's a piece of the drone, the last drone that she mated with, uh, and then the workers were chasing her around trying to remove it from her. So that's the general process, the general schedule. Um, once again, you graft. Uh, nine days later, you transfer it into the incubator. They spend two days into the incubator and you transfer them into the mating nukes on day 11. Uh, expect f eggs within two weeks uh, after the queen emerges. Give up to three or three and a half weeks before you repopulate that with a, with a cell. Um, once again, the, the chances of them returning uh, are returning as a well-mated queen are lower and lower and lower as the time goes on. But uh, I have seen queens return after, you know, three and a half or so weeks. Um, and they turned out to be well-mated and, and good laying queens. So give them some time, don't freak out. Um, but do be mindful of the fact that it is a perilous time in the queen's life to be going out by herself and flying off to a drone congregation area. So yeah, that's the overview of the schedule. Um, stay tuned for part three when we're going to be messing around with the cell builder behind me, getting it ready for a graft. Thanks for watching.